Hey, welcome back to Real Takes, where we are all movie love all the time. I'm Ann Stott, and tonight I am sharing so much movie love for Clute, the 1971 film directed by Alan J. Pakula, starring the one and only Jane Fonda, Donald Sutherland, and Roy Scheider. Now, Clute is part of a subgenre commonly referred to as the 1970s gritty New York City drama. And I'm a fan of most of these movies. Some examples are um, The Panic in Needle Park, Dog Day Afternoon, Serpico. Most of Martin Scorsese's early work falls into this category. The French Connection, um, lots of other great films. Go see them all. But I have a special, special place in my heart for Clute. Which is curious because the description of Clute reads sort of like a B minus softcore porn film. And with all respect to B minus softcore porn films, they're not usually my thing. But here's the deal with Clute Clute transcends itself over and over and over again. And the first way it does that is in the story. So the story reads, high class call girl is saved from psychopathic serial killer by a cop with a heart of gold. I mean, if I saw that description and didn't know anything else about the film, I would scroll right by most of the time. But this is how Clue transcends itself. Every element of Clute is executed at the highest levels of artistic integrity. So the story, which could have been cliche and cheap, is fleshed out in a truly thoughtful, three-dimensional, dynamic way. The characters are humanized by the actors so beautifully. The direction, the cinematography, the lighting, the music, the sound. I saw a recent interview with Jane Fonda where she said even now, if she watches the film, she can't always tell what's the music and what's the sound effect. That's the sound mixing, the editing, really every element of Clute is done with such care and comes together to feed the whole of the film perfectly. I don't like to use the word perfect about art because I think perfection is sort of anti-creativity, but I don't know. It could, I think it could apply here, but I really want to talk about the acting mostly because I like talking about Jane Fonda, who I admire greatly and other films of hers will be making appearances on real takes in the future. So stay tuned for that. But her work here, which won her her first Academy Award, um, is just, just incredibly moving, incredibly moving. And this is the next way that uh, Clute transcends itself because um, I think, you know, obviously misogyny exists in every area of our culture. But I think we can all agree that sex workers are subject to more misogyny, more judgment and disdain, more objectification and more violence than most other groups in society. And um, they're also frequently um, portrayed in film and TV as cliches. It's clear from the point of view of the film that they're considered other, bad, judged, etc. And Jane Fonda brought so much courage to her performance in this film and so much humanity that she transcends this role that could have been just like a sexed up objectification and actually makes it a subjective portrayal of the power and vulnerability of female sexuality. And the film doesn't judge her. And so the film shows us the ways that female sexuality can be um, 
you know, desired and hated by a lot of men. And, you know, I've read a lot and watched a lot of interviews about how Jane Fonda did her work. And the thing is, this courage that she brought, you know, she didn't think she could play the role. She tried to get out of playing the role. She spent eight nights before shooting began with sex workers in New York City. She dressed up. She wasn't recognizable as Jane Fonda. And she went out with them. She went to the After Hours Club. She walked the streets. And um, not one John hit on her. And not one pimp um, tried to corral her. And she thought, okay, I'm not believable. I can't do this. And she went to Alan Pakula and said, I'm not right. You need somebody else. Which, first of all, I actually think shows a lot of humility. Um, Apparently, Alan Bakula laughed at her. <laughs> um, I've seen interviews with him. He seems like a kind soul. I'm hoping he did it in a kind way, but he made it clear that he wanted her. And so she dug in and she remembered that when she lived in Paris, she had actually become friends with a couple of very high class sex workers who were hired by, you know, CEOs and dignitaries and presidents and things. And she'd gotten to know them and she used them as her entryway into how to play Brie. And she did um, a lot of work with the apartment that is her apartment in the film. She lived on the set for a couple of nights. They hooked it up with a working toilet and a working sink, which sets don't usually have. And um, she brought in decorations, little things she thought Brie, her character, would have. She decided what Brie would be reading and got the books for her. Um, the script, the film has therapy scenes in it, and it was written that she was going to a male therapist. She went to Alan Bakula and said, my character would never get vulnerable with a man. This needs to be a female therapist. They listened to her and um, changed the role to a female therapist. So she just you know, engaged in the way that great actors do so that she could, you know, bring herself to this role. And I think, you know, I know I've seen roles where actors are playing, for whatever reason, I feel like actors are staying outside of their character. And I don't feel that for a second in this movie. I feel, I don't feel like Jane Fonda judges her character or... Um, is trying to stay outside or safe from what Brie is going through. And what Brie is going through is really scary. And, um, and again, through this courage and through her vulnerability, she humanizes an experience that is very rarely represented with true humanity in our culture. There is loads written about Clute and the psychosexual dynamics in it. So if you want to dig deeper into this, go to the Google and you will be rewarded. But I want to say, just as a sign of how um, relevant Clute still is in a lot of ways, um, there's been particularly some writing by trans women in the last few years about how important Clute is to trans women because trans women are disproportionately more likely to become sex, wor sex workers, and they're also disproportionately um, more likely to be the targets of male um, rage and violence, cisgendered male rage and violence in particular, obviously. And so this humane portrait of this woman as a sex worker has come to mean a lot to some trans women. So that's another layer that the of relevance that the film has taken on 50 years later, um, which is what great art does. But I, I also wanna talk for a minute about Donald Sutherland because I think he brought so much generosity to his work in this film. Um, you know, he's the titular character. Clute is his character's name. And it's his actions that drive the story forward. And yet it really is Brie and Jane Fonda's movie on every level. And I feel like he's doing beautiful acting work, but I, what I fundamentally feel is that he's being so generous toward Jane Fonda 
And he knows that it's not his job to take the scenes from her. He knows that it's not his job to try to be at the center of what's happening, even though he's pushing the action forward. And it's a very interesting balance he has as the person making the action happen and yet not really being at the center of the film. And I, from my vantage point, he just brought an incredible amount of generosity to that role. Um, Roy Scheider is fantastic in a supporting role. Um, the movie's incredible. There's so much more I could talk about. This was the the first of what is now known as um, Alan Bakula's uh, Paranoia trilogy. So Clute, The Parallax View, The Incredible All the President's Men. Um, this was an early film for cinematographer Gordon Willis, but Gordon Willis went on to become one of the most important cinematographers in American film. And in particular, he defined this sort of 70s look that is a part of so many great films. He was the cinematographer on all three Godfathers. He was the cinematographer on a lot of um, Woody Allen's early work. So there are just so many reasons to watch this movie and I hope you love it as much as I do. I will say it's creepy and scary. And if you don't watch a lot of creepy, scary movies like me, I don't watch a lot of creepy, scary movies, proceed with caution. I watch it in the afternoon so that um, I have a few daylight hours between the movie and going to bed. <laughs> if you like horror and thriller, this isn't horror, but if you like scary movies, you won't have any trouble at all. But um, please, please watch the film and uh, let me know in the comments what you think, what you feel, and I will see you next week. Thanks for watching Real Takes. Hit the subscribe button below so the algorithms will tell you when new episodes are out. And if you want to support Real Takes, please visit my Patreon page where you can join at any tier from $2 to $100 per thing I make. The $15 tier is specifically about supporting Real Takes and you'll get behind the scenes information and be thanked in future videos. See you next Wednesday.